So good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Pritchard. I'm the superintendent of the Woodland Joint Unified School District. And, and John called me and, uh, and asked that, uh, to see if I was available to come and answer questions about um, the school bond that we're putting on the ballot this November. Uh, I'll get, oh, yes. Could you stand over here? And so could. that way we can all see you. Yeah, Tim said he could track me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, so I'll just give you the, the brief particulars of the bond, and then I'll, I'll probably just open it up for questions, um, uh, because uh, there are some parts of our bond that's very specific and very clear, and there are some parts of our bond that, that aren't so specific and clear, because we won't know that until after, or, or we'll wait and see if it passes. But um, one of the things that our school board has done I'm sure you are aware, four years ago, our school district um, tried to pass a bond, and there were two bonds, uh, Majors S and T. That was about a $99 million bond, and, uh, and that did not pass. Uh, I would say that didn't pass by a, a good margin. And so uh, part of the effort that our school, bond, uh, our school board did was to really reach out to the community, um, a variety of community members, and try to um, hear what the concerns were and then tailor um, this current bond to meet some of those needs. Part of that was, uh, the feedback we got was, if you uh, could make a bond that was simpler, people could understand what you were doing. s and were, were a variety of projects at a variety of sites, uh, and it was hard for people to understand what that was. And, uh, some other feedback we got was, you know, those are all good things in that old bond, but boy, there were a lot of things that were just on your wish list, not necessarily what you absolutely needed. And, you know, the third part, that's a lot of money, and it's going to be paid back over a long period of time. I believe it was a 35-year uh, payoff timeline. So in response to that, uh, the current board uh, looked at some of their concerns and decided on two projects. One, a second practice gym at Pioneer High School, which was in the original plans back in 1999, but because of bidding and the environment, who, whoever was managing that um, was not built. And then the second one is to upgrade or actually replace the HVAC or the air conditioning or the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system of Woodland High School um, because that system is beyond its um, useful lifespan. So two simple projects, fairly easy to explain. Um, we're uh, looking at a uh, approximately $20 million bond, which is much smaller than the $99 million of s &T. and And we're looking to have the payoff term of that bond five years, as opposed to the 35 or 40. Uh, and, and in looking at that, uh, really what that does is that saves the taxpayers um, interest. Uh, if you stretch that out, uh, that could be anywhere from four or five million dollars over a 35 year period, whereas if you can compress that payback period to five years, uh, we're looking at just a little under two million dollars. And so that's, that's a way to kind of use the money you're getting to go to the project and not um, paying off interest. So, so in terms of hearing the feedback from the community, uh, small, short, to the point, quick payoff period. Now, there are some other issues that have come up in our conversations related to that, and, and really it revolves around um, assurances or maybe some uh, ways to mitigate the risk of waste. And so, so one of those is we will have a bond oversight committee because what I can tell you is when you say we're going to build a second gym, there are many interpretations for that. So people will come to the school district and say, hey, you know what, great. Is that going to see 5,000, 10,000 people? Is it going to be like Arco Arena? No, it's a second practice gym. And the function of the Bond Oversight Committee will be to make sure the district does what they're saying they're going to do, a second practice gym, a small box like the second gym of Little High. The other thing is, we need to make sure that if we're going to the voters and saying we're going to provide these two projects, which is HVAC and the second gym, that we're able to deliver. Um, and, and I've shared with some people in this room, I, I don't want to be put in a position as the superintendent to say, hey, we're going to build these things and then not be able to build it because of the bidding environment or, or whatever the economics are at the time. 
Um, so our bond is 20 million. Um, I believe we've posted on our website um, the breakdown of that, and you might notice it doesn't add up to 20 million. So there's a little um, cushion in there in, in case uh, to adjust for the, the competition. Now, our board has committed though, and they've done this verbally uh, at a board meeting, that should our projects cost less, we will only issue the amount of bonds needed to complete the two projects. And so, um, even though there's a little cushion, um, that is uh, the promise that our board has made uh, as kind of a, a way to mitigate um, if these projects come in below cost. And, and the way we do that is we have to do the planning first before we sell the bonds so that we know how many to sell. And that will protect us against um, going out to bid and the, the contractors knowing that we have 20 million already issued. So we do the bids before we issue and that will help us with leverage in, in, um, in working the bid system, I guess, is what you would say. So with that, two simple, two simple projects, smaller bond that we're looking for. Um, they are both needs, and um, the idea is to pay that back quickly so that we can minimize the interest to our taxpayers. Those are all things we considered as we moved forward with, um, with putting this on the ballot. With that, I'll open it up for questions. I have got one. Yes, sir. Raised from the bond can only be used for its facilities. 
Correct. Not towards paying staff. Yes, and actually the money raised can only go towards those two projects. We can't even use it for general facilities, just for those two projects. Yeah, um, and, and that's part of that AB 195. We're saying it's two projects, the money goes to those two projects and only those two projects. The, the rent uh, is, was 52 for 100,000. So an example, if your house was uh, assessed, not the value, market value, but assessed at 300,000, that would be 150 and some odd cents per, per year. 156 per year. Uh, uh, 156 per year. Per year, if you're, if you're assessed. Already paying enough. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the things we've heard is uh, uh, an example given to me was I look at my tax bill and there are a variety of things on there, um, including our old bond. Yes. Uh, you made a comment, if I heard correctly, that uh, that $99 million bond, that 35 year bond, mm -hmm. it would have cost uh, interest around $4.5 million, is that correct? Mm, I, don't, I don't think I said that, but I, but I, no, what I was saying is uh, with our $20 million bond, had we, had we spread that out over 35 oh. years, it would, it would have almost doubled the interest. So that's why we want to keep it short to. Uh, yeah. And, and that's just an estimate. Uh, I actually have another question. Uh, uh, since you're looking to look at these two uh, items that you want to uh, repair, or you want to build, you want to repair, what about the stadium at Willow High? How's this going to affect the stadium at Willow High? So the stadium at Willow High School, um, the, the Board of Trustees have taken advantage of uh, some unique parts of the budget over the last three years, and that is the state would give us a specific amount to operate on, and then they would give us what they call one-time money. So the, the board has set aside $3.5 million out of that one-time money you know, to have enough to get the stadium up to a standard that it can be operational again and be very similar to uh, the Pioneer High School Stadium. So that is remove the berms of dirt, have, have uh, aluminum stands and a press box and lighting. Uh, we also have a couple other sources of, um, of income, which this is going to be a little confusing. It's Prop 39 funds through a grant. It's, it's separate than a Prop 39 bond, uh, but we, we're going to get a little over a million dollars from that grant to help with the stadium lighting. So, so that would have no impact on, on the bond. Okay, so um, or, or on your taxes, that's already set aside. So the prop 39, the, the 39? Yes. The one time money? Yep. And the 3.5 in the district, 4.5 million. Mm -hmm. Is there other money coming in, did you say, from the state also? Uh, just our general fund money, but, but we would use that for our maintenance. That way it won't impact the stadium funds, and the stadium funds are separate from the bond funds. And that 4.5 will be enough to, uh, to reconstruct the bleachers? Press box and light it. We are keeping our fingers crossed, yes. That and, if it, and if it doesn't, then what about it? If it's not enough, then what's going to occur then? What's going to happen? So, so in, uh, we, our architects are actually working on those plans, and I believe in the next four to five weeks, those will be through the approval process called DSA. And, um, and at that point, we'll go out to bid and we'll know. So uh, in essence, we'll probably have to value engineer. Um, you know, it might mean you have less bleachers um, than you had originally done. That's where our flexibility can be. The press box is the press box. The lights are the lights. Mm -hmm. But rather than, I don't know, 3,000 seats, we might have 2,000 seats. And, or the visitor side won't have seats, kind of like what uh, Davis High did. So none of the money from this bond will ever go towards that stadium. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. The rules we have Yes, the rules we have for the bond it can only be used for those two projects. And that is the function of the bond oversight committee to make sure we stick to that. Yes ma'am. Um, I don't know if it would be possible but uh, there was talk that the Indian uh, uh, we have been happy to put a substantial sum of money into the stadium project. Uh, you weren't here at that time. Uh, I think that is an idea that should be revisited. I don't know if some people are so puritanical that uh, they don't realize that we are already taking money from the state lottery for our schools. And um, we try 
Five has also funded some police cars, I understand. And they are part of the community. And um, I think if they wish to be charitable, it would be thoughtful to honor their interests. So, so I, I actually heard that same thing that the town had wanted to give something to the district. And yes, it was before my time. What I can tell you is, since I've been here in the last five years, we have applied for funding uh, to the Yochidehi Foundation twice. Uh, both of those times uh, we were uh, turned down or denied or just we didn't meet the, the bar that they were looking for. And uh, the feedback we got from them the last time was, you know, district, you're asking for money, but what have you done? So that prompted our board to start putting away money, that $3.5 million, start doing architect plan, we did some geological surveys uh, to see what was in the burns and things like that, so that we could go back to them and say, hey, we've made this commitment, can you help us out? Now, this evening we have Karen Gossard, and she is basically the lead uh, for a nonprofit group who is fundraising for things beyond what we will be able to afford as a district. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, we work with Karen, and it might be something where we are able to support her in an application, or she can support us in an application. We haven't gotten that far. But there's also another source of funding that's relatively new, and, and I don't know the name of it, but it's a different funding source through the tribe. They've renegotiated their contracts with the state and now have an income source of up to $24 million a year, and they can then use that, in addition to their foundation, to help fund uh, projects under certain criteria. So that might be something we explore uh, to help complete the stadium. But our, our goal from a district point of view is to get it up to a standard that's very similar to the Pioneer High School Stadium, and then let, let go-getters like Karen, um, you know, and if we can support that, um, go look for those type of funds. I, I'm confused as to exactly what's happening here. There are going to be three mem seven members? At a minimum, yes. Okay. What are these members responsible for? So the main function is to make sure that the district spends the money on what they said they're going to spend the money on. But those members are part, not a part of, of the board. Correct. There's, there's this. So the board is out of it. No, they're choosing it. The, the, the board, yeah, the board, the board is out of it in terms of oversight. That's correct. Okay, so this is an oversight committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, let's, so they're let's responsible. Say, they're responsible for, for uh, like a, a check and balance. So let's say our board said, hey, great, pass. Now we're going to build, um, uh, you know, a, a 10,000 seat basketball stadium at Pioneer High School. The Bond Oversight Committee has the authority to say, that's not what it says here on the ballot. It says a second <coughs> practice gym. That's not what it says in the backup material. It says a second practice gym. So no, you can't do that. And, and then when the auditors come in, they will agree with the Bond Oversight Committee that you can't just build whatever you want. You can only build what you've told this taxpayer. Okay, so what are the three things that you say need to be done? It's so, two, two projects. It's, it's the second practice gym at Pioneer High School and a new HVAC, or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system at Wilbur Conner. So it's two air conditioning systems. Well, it's, it's actually one big air conditioning system. It's a, at Wilbur High, it's a central system. So it has a central chiller and, and uh, I'm not sure what the other part is, heat pump that supplies the whole campus, about 80%. So what happens is when it goes out, the whole campus loses its HVAC system. It's not a regionalized system. It's not a... Uh, well, this is only for the high school. Just for the high school, correct. 20 million. Uh, for, for both projects, yes. But both of them are at the high school. And one, the HVAC's at Willow High, the gym is at Pioneer High. Oh, gotcha. One project in each side. So Pioneer does not have a gym? They have one, they don't have a second gym. So Woodland High School has, has two gyms, a main gym and a practice gym for 1,200 students, 1,250 students. Pioneer High School has one gym for 1,500 students. And in the original plans, there was a, a second gym plan. Yes, ma'am. This may be a little early to ask, but in 
in getting the people who are going to put all this stuff together, contractors, uh, will they be local? So, uh, I don't know, but what I will tell you is it depends on which method of construction we go with. So, one of the, but what method? the most common method is, is you go bid build. So, you, you have a public bid, you select the lowest bid, and then they build it. It's very straightforward, and so that could be a local company, it could be someone from Sacramento. Uh, most likely would be somebody too far away because they're going to have to have people here to build it. Um, there's a, a different type of construction called the lease-lease path, where you uh, hire a company, where you could hire a local company, and then they bid, build all of the subcontractors, the electrical, the roofing, the metalwork, the cement, things like that. So in, in that method, you have uh, a pro is you could pick a local contractor. There are some cons to that method as well. Um, there are methods where you hire a, uh, a contract manager and they then sub the contractor and, and all this stuff. That's messy because you're adding a, another layer to yeah. that in terms of cost. So the answer is yes, it could be local, but if we go with a bid bill, it's based on the lowest bid. Yes? Tom, when I work with construction companies, a lot of times the contracts required local, a certain percentage go to local businesses. Would that be an option here? But like 30% would have to be part of local, go to local businesses? Yeah, you, you can do it by percentage. Um, sometimes you can do it by um, location. So um, you can say, hey, we would like to hire someone within a 60 mile radius of Google. And so that's the, the contractors you would consider. Uh, uh, sometimes when you do that, you just have to be careful that you're not getting a local company who's not equipped to do that. Um, I had experience with that where I had a, uh, an in-town plumbing contractor. And, and I knew the dad, I knew the son. And they were bidding on a high school project of mine. And, and I thought, okay, two people can't do this project. And so we were able to then take the next lowest bid, um, which was a, a company 10 miles away, but they, they were geared up to do something like that. So as long as we're able to consider that, yes, you can, you can do that. Yes, sir. Talk about your over bond site. Uh, site. You said that you can't do it, it. Once it sees it, you can go and do whatever you want to as a district. Correct. What happened to Measure 99? Uh, measure T in 1999 with their bond oversight committee. I, I don't know. I'll tell you. They have no teeth. <laughs> I sat on the school board for 12 years. Now, well get in this. You're telling us the HAV, the chillers, there's only one at Willow High School? No, it's a central system that's You're only saying there's only one? <coughs> no, it's, it, there's three. Uh, three chillers. Yeah, I'm not saying how many chillers. I'm saying it's a central and system. And sure. how old is the system? Uh, my understanding is that it's the original system. No, it isn't. It was done with, with remodernization back in 2006 or 2008 was all redone. All three chillers, all the groundwork, all the underground piping, and everything was done less than 20 years ago. So your information is wrong. You're telling these people that it's 40 years old and it's not. The Bond Oversight Committee has no teeth. You can do whatever you want to because they did it in measure T in 99 sat there, I've watched it done. Are you going to build a second gym without a bathroom like at Woodland High School too then? So the estimated costs we got were based on the model at Woodland High School. So no bathrooms. So you're going to have parents going to scream at you because there's no bathrooms in that. But I think why, why build a second gym and, 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 and both to utilize it so you can use revenue and not put in bathroom so you can rent it out on the weekends without opening up the whole school because there's no bathrooms in it. It does not make sense to me. See, what he's coming up with is the fact that you're making all these decisions and then telling the seven members that they're responsible. Okay? So that's a problem right there. 
Because these people all of a sudden are responsible for something that you have already done. Which means that they don't really know what, what it was all about. Correct. I, I would say correct, uh, except that with the, um, the safeguard that we would only issue the bonds um, equal to the project, that means we have to do the project planning first. And since we would have to then uh, constitute the committee within 60 days, uh, they would be able to see that planning process. Yes, sir. Tom, who or what determines who will be on bond oversight? But he's correct. The board of trustees would determine who's on, okay. on that. Yes. That's the final word. Yes. People do not have any say. Correct. Well, it's, all, um, it's all taken care of. The, 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 yes, the board would select and they would determine the size, so if they wanted to do more than um, seven. Uh, the, uh, however, the bond oversight committee meetings are all under the Brown Act, and so anyone can attend those meetings, um, just like the board did. Yes, sir. What is your measure T with 99 million with your bond oversight committee? The reason why there wasn't a second gym built at Pioneer is because they overran the money costs. Bond Oversight Committee told no, and they still overcost it. That's the problem. The Board Oversight Committee is a waste of people's time. You say you, you, they got all this power, but you go out and spend the money and then ask them to approve it afterwards. So, so I, I, let me clarify what I've said. So the Bond Oversight Committee, I believe, has a lot of power in terms of determining what you build that you said you're going to build. However, they don't have the oversight of how much you're going to build on. So, so in other words, as you said, they, they spent more on the campus and weren't able to build the second gym. That wouldn't necessarily be an oversight of the committee. No, what I'm saying is you can go out and say, I want to spend this money on the HAB and then turn around and go spend it somewhere else. Because that's what they did. I, I don't believe in the, the leaking. Even with that same measure, the same 939 is the same way as what they did with Measure T. I was there. Yeah. I don't think the rules have changed. I just, the I rules just, haven't changed, but the board has not changed either. Administration has changed a little bit, but they still have the same ideological is they're listening to people with suits and not going out and asking their own questions and following through and doing their own research. They're believing whatever you tell them is the honest God's truth. And I sat there for 12 years and I'll tell you, it's not all what it's cracked up to be. You guys are gonna pass the bond regardless because I see how it's gone. It's been quiet. I care less. I don't have that much time left, so it's gonna be probably paid for whatever. But the problem is, is you, the HAB, the children's system, is an outdated, inadequate for a school. I believe in that. I told them that when they put it in. You cannot run that equivalently to HAB, to AC, because you have, once you turn it on, it cools down the whole school. It's the stupidest thing you ever seen. It works for a hospital because they're open 24-7. Schools are not. It's inadequate. It's not cost effective. It's a piece of junk. But same thing as they put the water cooler at Beamer Gym on top of a hardwood floor. Had an HAV guy because the director of maintenance said it was great. His own HAV guy says it isn't. But guess what? Because administration recommended it, they put a water cooler there. That's the problem. You have to ask questions. And that's, I sat there, but one of seven, you're up, voted. So. so let me go, I think Mark, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, I, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying, folks, uh, because I looked into the group four years ago about the oversight committee. The oversight committee was extremely high, uh, weak. Some of the members, I call them, they didn't even remember going to a meeting. <laughs> but, but going forward, that was X number of years ago. I think the difference today is that the 
people who will sit on the oversight committee. Now you're shaking your head no, and I can understand why you would do that because you were there on the board for 12 years. Well, you have going forward, I think our relationship with with the district, uh, I know that the relationship with Tom and, and Lewis is extremely strong and good. And I think if we put some strong community members on the oversight committee, uh, they can have the teeth that are needed uh, to really do a, a job and do the job well. Well, because there are a bunch of unknowns in these two boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's contingencies, yeah. there's soft costs. I see it. Yeah. And, and they don't add up. Right. I understand that, but because we, as members of the community, schools belong to us. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you got no support for 12 years. I understand that. That's the past. We, we've got to move forward. And I'm hoping that members of the community step forward. And uh, because these, these are just the beginning of the bottom lines. But if we do these bonds right, instead of the 9600, what they're going to do down today is $150 million. Pick out some of these projects and uh, and and do them correctly with members of the community. Here's the problem, Mark. You going to build another gym? Where's the maintenance cost on it? These guys do not have a maintenance facility bond. These guys do not put any maintenance money in towards maintenance. They've not painted these buildings in over 15 years since it was modernized. You you don't paint your house every 15 years. You got to. These guys don't put the money there. I sat there on much of it. You I'm guys not. want to keep passing the bond for modernization? Oh, it, it looks crummy. It's all done. Yeah, because they don't spend their money on deferred maintenance. They have done. I have asked them, what's a deferred maintenance? I'm going, okay, you're director of maintenance. It's a joke. Well, we're not, we're not going to sit here and argue because what you're saying is right. I get it. But we went to about five or six superintendents this you know, I don't know, 12 years. Uh, you, you, you lived through yeah, it. I went through it. We're, we're trying to go forward. We're trying yeah. to look forward. That's it. Tom, yes. I'm not disagreeing with you at all. Yeah. That's how frustrated we are as voters today. Yeah. But now we're trying to go forward, and these guys are listening. And, and if I can um, just piggyback on what Mark said. So, so I, I think that feeling of uh, powerlessness comes from uh, if the board uh, said they were going to do a $20 million bond and it got approved and they just issued the full 20. And so then, you know, you have 20 million, of course, everybody, everybody who's going to bid on something knows you have 20 million and their bids are going to be escalated. So part of that reducing the risk is to say, no, no, we're, we're going to do our planning first. That allows the bond oversight committee to see that planning process, whereas before, the bond oversight committee, you've already issued the bonds. There is no teeth. I'll agree with you on that in, in terms of how you're going to do that because the bids are going to come in high. So the idea that, um, and, and I want to, I guess I want to thank Tim. Um, he had sent me a video about um, the better way, uh, which is, I, I believe, somehow loosely associated with taxpayers' associations, but it's just a way to try and reduce that waste. And, and I'm not saying in the end we're going to have zero waste, but, but the idea is it has an outline of what bond oversight committee should really do. And there's a, I want to say it's the fourth, maybe fifth bullet. It talks about some things that aren't necessarily statutorily required, but it's what Mark is talking about. And that is if, if we get the right people who are looking at the right thing and asking the right questions during that planning process, that to me is just a little bit different but already having the money in my pocket saying, here's the projects we're going to do, just make sure we do it. Because you are, or you do have a voice, I guess, in that process. Yes, you're not the final stamp, but it, it's a little different in my mind. I guess that's the way I do it. Also, I, I don't know how it was when you were on the board, but we, we have um, restored our deferred maintenance account. And our board actually put an extra amount uh, towards that including uh, a deferred, no, not so, a deferred maintenance team, no, what is that? Preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance team, and they're actually starting, to, so they've only been in place for a year, but it's something that we also realized, um, some of you may have attended some field trips to our sites, I want to say two or three years ago, and part of that was to 
to show people there are things going on. But at the same time, part of the feedback was, well, Tom, if you clean out the, uh, the leaves, you wouldn't have rusty gutter. And, and so we have a team going around and taking care of some of those little things now so that they don't become bigger things. And that is an investment that our, our board actually did. Well, that was part of your problem with trying to pass that bond four years ago. We didn't have that in place four years ago. Yeah. Correct. No, you did. Correct. And, and you showed all the bad. I said, that's the reason why you lost it, because yeah. you don't take care of what you got. You can't keep coming back and saying, we need another bond to keep up. Right. So, so we believe. You spend your money wisely. We, we believe we are using ongoing money to, to help with that. So, Terry. Um, a couple of questions now. Warren's brought up the type of HVAC system at Woodland High School is not appropriate for the setup. With this bond, would we be stuck with the same type of setup, or can it be changed and reintroduced to a different type of HVAC system? And then the second part is, why do we need an HVAC system? What are, what are the conditions that are like that it needs to you know two thirds of this bond for that system? Yeah. So, so um, the estimate was based on the the central chiller system, and that's the, just the system we had in place. However, one of the things that we know, just from a practical point of view, is that if it goes down, the campus goes down. If you're talking about 80%, 78% of the campus, we do have portables that have their own, and the, the second gym has its own. So the idea is that's not practical. Like you said, it might be great for a hospital, but um, we want to shut everything down, or if we're using the library, we just want to um, pool the library. So really what we're looking at what, and what the board has, has expressed interest in is a regional system. So you have several regions per building. Um, that is actually cheaper than um, the central chiller system and is more practical in terms of, of maintenance. The second part is, um, and you guys are all aware, um, that uh, Woodland High has an interesting uh, construction in the sense that there are many rooms that don't have windows. Yeah. Uh, they have internal doors and internal hallway, and so to, to maintain a, a, a temperature, uh, you really need an effective system. Yeah, is it built kind of like a floor you know, That would be a nice way of saying that, yes. Or maybe yes. they choose an application. There are, there, there are two, two doors. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got to understand when it was built. Yeah. yeah. You have 60 rights. And it was built in 1970, and it's to stop a Columbine or a Sandy Hook. Well, it's absolutely easy to secure. Yes. You bet yes, sir. Yes. It's an easy lockdown, and you can't get into it. Yeah. That's what it's all about. you got to remember the history of when it was built. And, and I would tell you, as a former teacher, ultimately the classroom sizes are the same shape. They're 960 right. square feet, and, uh, you know, and so we can have good instruction in there. The, the labs are 1,250 square feet. So, um, yeah, well, we just need to keep them cool. Uh, but what are the conditions like now in the classroom? Why the HVAC system? So, last summer the HVAC system went out, and uh, it, luckily it was during the summer, and we moved our summer school into the um, library, which has a, an independent system. And uh, we had to release the kids by 1030 because it, it just got to be over 85 degrees. Um, and that because that was over overusing. So, we, you know, I. I could probably tell you stories from when I grew up in, in the little town of Live Oak, just north of Yuba City, and 85 would be a nice, cool summer day, but um, it's a little different these days. Yes sir. yes, sir. I live in Spring Lake, and I have five children, and okay. I'm wondering, I, about the seven um, members on the board that are going to supervise or oversight, uh, you said one of them was from a taxpayer organization. Would that be someone from this organization? It could be, yes. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, I believe the wording is from a bona fide taxpayers association. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then a second question is: This uh, bond is for the two different high schools, and this will be spread equally if passed across the entire Woodland city limits. Uh, across the district limits. District limits. Yes. Okay. Not the city. Limits. Okay. And then, is there any precedent for breaking these up and separating them in the district so they're more contained in their own high school? So, uh, so, so district not for, services. Not for a bond, it would be a district. Okay. So district yeah. okay. So, so developer fees, you can do that if you have certain arrangements. Right. So, so there's no the separating the two. Yes. Yeah. So when you purchase your home, and you're I see several things here that I'd like to comment on. One of them is that this oversight board is chosen by the school board. And I think that at the very least, they should consider applications. You're the first time that I've heard that there were certain categories that had to be represented. That, and that's in the law. Yeah, well, I, 
I don't know, I've just always heard that they had an oversight board, but I've never heard the specifics, so thank you for that. Um, but I think that we should be able to have it by application, not that they're just picking their friends or something like that. And if anybody wants to be on that board, that they should be considered. And, um, and they should be required to have some meetings so that they actually are overseeing something. Now, we've got a gentleman here who served on the board for 12 years, and he has brought up some very worthwhile points. And um, for example, you could rent out a gym to some club ball or something that's, uh, you know, or, or some team, just uh, area team, you know, and, and makes, actually makes some money off of the gym on nights when you are not using it for the school district. And I think that's a very worthwhile point, but you're surely going to have to have a restroom in there. So it seems to me that before you get down to the nitty gritty of having the plans all drawn out, you ought to have some folks come in, invite the public in for the specific purpose of looking at what you're figuring to have in each of these things. And because I know my late husband was on the school board and he had a lot of business experience. And the trouble is you get a school board and most all of them are there fighting over curriculum. They want the kids to have this and learn that and this and that. And nobody pays attention to the business of it, the practicality of the of the rooms and the and the service. I mean, you can save a lot of money just by not having the HVAC running all the time. And not only do you save the money on not having it operating, but you save the wear and tear on the stuff itself. So there are all these kind of things. And there were people worried about the curriculum, but nobody was going up on the roofs to make sure they weren't leaking. So I, I very well understand that. And I think that there needs to be, a, you, you, you could usher in a greater cooperation between the people, and and I'm so glad Tim showed you that that better way initiative, because what we have found is that these builders of schools travel in a cubby, and they it's like this. They are they are a small little group. Yes, and so that's why we are particularly interested in seeing that we get some local people in in on this and our goal would actually be to see that we had the bonds floated in our own community so we have we have some long-range thoughts but anyway some of these things i'm hoping we might be able to to effectuate sure so we'll be talking about the bond oversight committee so uh i i put together a bond oversight committee in my former district and we did it by application um and so i i've talked to a couple of other districts they've all done them by application uh, so, so that that will be my recommendation. Let me do that through right. a, uh, an application process. Uh, the other part is the bond, uh, the board has to have a discussion as to if you want to just have the minimum number or do you want to have more. So, the so law says you have to have one taxpayers association member. There's nothing that says you can't have two. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that says you can't have more parents. There's nothing that you know says you can't have a maybe 15 or a builder uh, or, yeah. or, a, or a builder or someone, someone who knows building is in the community. So, so there's that. Um, and, and I think uh, having that process is more transparent than appointment uh -huh. because you don't know who has that background. Right. In terms of uh, designing in uh, things that will help generate income, uh, which is with Mr. Um, uh, Berg's uh, idea of the bathroom. So, so I said earlier the estimate was based on the second gym at Room High. That's just to get us so we could get a bond on the ballot. However, <laughs> Um, there are two things that I would tell you. When we actually go into the design, it might be that, and since the bond oversight committee is already formed at this point, that we say, hey, part of the second practice gym still has to have restroom. The kids have to go to the bathroom. And, and so that is something we want. But the second thing I would warn you about, and this is where I think the waste part comes in, because I've sat in meetings already, and, and they say, oh, great. So we're going to put in restrooms, uh, and we need, oh, uh, you know what, we need uh, three classrooms on the end, and we need seating for 1,500, not, you know, 300. And so I, I explained this to Mark as a jar <coughs> again. And, and we don't want that, and, and that's where we would want that input so we can get, that's what comes with the second gym, uh, and that will allow us to maybe generate some income, but we don't go too far. 
And, and that's, that's the difficulty. Yes, sir. This is a question. Is there any reason why a bond oversight committee cannot be formed before the election? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I know some districts have done that. And I, I mentioned that because I remember in another school district, the last day of the, when one member of the board left and the new board members came in, sure. and her last statement to everyone said, she said, well, now I can be a member of the bond oversight committee. Right. And, and the, my experience has been that the friends of the school board who are invested in the bond major, who campaign for it, are the people that get appointed to bond oversight committees. And under the law, they're only required to have two meetings a year. And I guess my follow-up question is, um, do they issue a report to you, or will they to the school board, or do they issue a report to the citizens, to the voters? They actually issue their annual report to the citizens. I believe they have their own website at, at the expense of the district. Would that, would that expense be paid out through the bond? No, it can't be paid out of the bond. It has to be paid by the district. If there's secretarial support or anything that goes along with running that committee, it has to be part of our operating budget. Is my understanding. Um, I, you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, I did have a couple people say, "Hey, let's get um, people on the bond, form it now, get people on the bond oversight committee, because that will." They were used talking as a strategy to pass the bond. They said, "Hey, we get the right people on there. People know who's going to be overseeing, and and then they might vote for the bond." Right. And I said, "Well, they may not like the people on there. They might vote against it just because they're going to be oversight." So, so that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is, um, at that point, uh, there's not much to do. So you would just be doing it maybe to avoid uh, nepotism or, or be getting buddies on there. Um, you know, but they would sit there until the bond pastor didn't pass. Um, I will go back, though. I, I'm not sure who this is tied to. Might might be Mark's comments. Um, and, and it's related to how the board or the team of the bond oversight committee. So the board uh, appoints who's on the bond oversight committee. And, and like I said, I'm hoping it's through application. Um, but the board also approves the bylaws. Now, the board hasn't appointed anyone yet, and the board hasn't even considered the bylaws. So that would be another area where if you wanted to get some things into those bylaws, of course, you know, the, the board would have the final say on that, but you could uh, provide input to the board as to what might be in those bylaws. And again, I, I go back to, have some of those uh, better way um, guidelines. They have, here's what you have to do by law, here's what we recommend, here's the best practice. Are, are you saying the bylaws of the Independent Citizens Oversight Committee will be drafted and approved by the school board? Correct. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's the rule. Yes. Yes, sir. Come back on the second gym. Mm -hmm. The gym at Woodland High School got water. It's got a drinking fountain. So it's got water, it's got waste. That's what I couldn't understand. I missed it. Right. I went through the whole deal because they wanted to put crank up basketball courts, which they wanted somebody on a 12 foot ladder to work a crank, which I said, that's a lawsuit, may need to happen. I got that, but I missed the bathroom. But there was supposed to be a cinder block put on the west side of that gym to make the bathroom. Now, and there is a space there. There is a space there, trust me. Now, go to the local contractors. Tell you one thing, go to Woodland Pioneer and go look at the workmanship of the local contractor. I wouldn't use him to build a doghouse. Go look at it falling apart. The brick facades are cracking. It was cracking within a year of being built. So I don't always go with a local contractor. They're not the best. You want me to mention his name? I can't, but I'm telling you. I would, I, I stopped him from bidding on the other modernization. Shoddy workmanship. My grandfather was a master boat builder, so I understand construction. I worked in the construction field, so not local is always great. No, but I, you I have done a least by that, your district. Uh, At least we buy back in Woodland? Yeah. Oh, okay. The second gym. Oh, okay. You right. really smaller, more concentrated projects that works best because you get a guaranteed maximum price and there's not as much uh, 
things that could go wrong. So, so it's oh, there was lots of things I'm that could go wrong, wrong right. and they wanted to change it, and that was the first thing that I ever got seven board members to vote with me because they removed the redwood trees because it was an inconvenience to them. They said it was a sewer problem, which was 10 feet away. Right. No, it was an inconvenience for them. They removed six redwood trees, and they wanted us to pay, pay for it. And that's the only thing. We probably ended up paying for it some way, but it's kind of good, good for you. No. Yes. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for being here, you and Lewis both. Um, I have a few questions. I'm going to try to make them as brief as possible. But I'm concerned about some of the things you just said. And we moved on to the Oversight Committee. But you said that the, um, the estimates were done a little posh. And you're talking about um, doing planning. You talked about doing planning after you get the money. Yeah. Now, the estimates are high. I did a, I did a little research on what, what we had for the same project in 2011's master plan. It only changed in 2013 by adding 5% for, um, for um, escalation, which was kind of high, actually, at the time. But in any case, it was about the same. So what I did is I eliminated some of the things that are not construction costs. And, or, and one that was not actually listed anywhere or discussed anywhere in the previous iterations of this. And funny as it's, in fact, if you want to look at this. Uh, I'm going to give you the, the, the funny guy. Yeah. But just so you know what I'm talking about. Sure. But, um, and if you want to, anybody else wants to see this, I think you have to um, So basically, if you eliminate the $4 million power upgrade, it's kind of weird. Why would you spend $2.2 million on equipment and then spend twice as much to make it run? Yes. Is, is there some, there's some logic problem there? No, so, the logic problem is actually a mistake. You've got $6 million, you have a $6 million system in that, in that case. There's also duplications. I didn't worry about the duplications for this. But what I did is I took the original um, the 2018 project cost, which I'm now kind of thinking that you're saying isn't really good. Well, it, it, it's, it's not for power upgrades. We actually have to this in the time. Yeah. We so, didn't well, realize, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm yeah, realize that until later. But, yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, if you deduct out the $4 million and you compare it to the 2011 cost for a complete uh, gutting of the HPA system in 2011, on the, the master plan for us to, um, and it hasn't really changed all that much over you know the S and T version, but they're within two percent of one another. So construction costs really haven't changed all that much. Um, they put in a general contractor markup, which could be just their overhead costs. It could also include some profit at seventeen percent. I couldn't tell from a single line item whether that 17% was included in the 2011 cost, so I added $722,000 to that. Thought that was fair. Still came within 2% of one another. So then I looked at um, combined contingencies of soft costs, and that's where it blew my mind, because everything in 2011 was 25% contingencies and soft costs, 25% of all costs. What they did for these estimates was 25, and this is the HVAC, 25% for contingencies against the, for the construction cost only, and then 30% on top of that for all costs, including the 30% more on markup, 30% more on everything. Um, that doesn't seem right. So now we're talking a huge amount. Actually, it worked out to be six times more, a million and 63, versus 5,986,000. What changed, and I would assume that anyone who would have done this calculation, they should have done this calculation, looked at the old, and said, hey, what's happened in the construction industry that now we have to have such high contingencies of stock costs, or what is it about this project that we don't understand? We might bust into uh, or something like that. So they're putting the risk on the money on you getting the money. And I guarantee you that any contractor 
who's looking at this is going to say, as you said, oh, they got 20 million dollars, so I'm going to bid 19,999,000. Um, and then some other guy's going to be going, oh, they got for less. Yeah. I've been at construction bids. We've done that stuff. You look to see what the other guy's doing because they're originally writing. So we have basically 258% increase from 2011 to 2018 for the exact same project. Something seems wrong with that, and you're gauging the amount of the bond, which is already set now because it's been turned into the election office. Um, although I have an issue with that too. But um, you're now gauging this and saying we're going to plan after you've done it, which is exactly what Morgan Childress said in one of the, I think it was the second meeting. He said, we don't, we don't, we can do all the uh, negotiating after we get the money. And it's like, how do we don't do that? And the planning that you're talking about, you don't do that after you get the money. You do that before you get the money to make sure that what you're getting is what you should be getting. Um, so I see some, some problems in the very beginning. But let me ask you this, because you said $20 million for the bond repeated. That is 20.2 or something. Exactly. And that's what's in, but it says on your website, but the facts about the bond, it says 20 million. Does it say 20 million? Yeah, the, probably, the, probably the PowerPoints uh, were just, that was before we actually set the amount on the back. Well, they were changed on August 2nd, according to the properties. So, what was changed? The, the, the PowerPoints were updated on August 2nd. One by you. One by an unknown. I, I don't know if I changed the, the twenty dollar amount. That, I don't. I, well, I know. I know what you changed. Sure. Like the original oh, one yeah. yeah. It wasn't changed. And I'm not. I'm not really talking about that right now because you updated some documents. Right. Okay. That's fine. Um, did you update them accurately? Then I have a problem. It was inaccurate. But in any case, it's twenty point two million, and you remember why. And, and I'm asking you to say why to these folks here. Why was it 20.2 million? Why not just 20? Yeah. So, so the extra 200,000 covers the issuance costs and and the, the cost to to rate agencies, uh, 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 financial advisors, underwriters, bond council, cost for it, that we have at the county, all of the folks that help us move the bond forward. Okay. Now. One of the things that I asked you over when we had we had preliminary meetings to the, uh, the school board meetings with, with several of us, and one of the things I asked you if you if you're financing those costs up front, you need to tell the voters that. I have the resolution that was approved by everybody and the board. Okay. Now the other thing is. The total of what I consider the inflated, and now I'm thinking that you're saying they're not exactly good estimates. Although that one guy for the HDACs that came to speak to the board that made the estimate said that he did it low. He actually was low at 15, 15 point five, which I think is crazy, especially when you're looking at uh, a six six hundred percent increase in soft costs and contingencies. What's changed about soft costs? But in any case, the two jobs come together to 19.6 million. Correct. So that leaves a little over a half a million dollars. <coughs> now, you're not telling you. You told the voters 15.5, 4.1 um, for the two projects. There's a half a million dollars, and you've been saying that it's about 200,000, maybe 300,000. Where's the extra money? Yeah, so, so earlier uh, what I mentioned was we uh, one of our concerns in moving forward is so, so we understand that the estimates are the best we can do at this point. We had actually um, shared with the people who did both estimates for the gym and for the HVAC. Um, at the time we asked for those estimates, we said, um, can you project that for completion of construction in 2023? We were actually, the thinking at the time was that we would move forward with uh, a bond on the November 2000 or 2020 ballot. So we were thinking in a year to get everything in place and then construction would start. So, so a lot of that inflated estimate is based on more years out. Um, the further out you get, the, the probably the greater the estimates get. 
Um, even so, when you add them all together, um, 20 million is still 500,000 or something like that, uh, higher than the both of those together. Um, part of that was we are concerned that we wouldn't be able to build what we're saying we're going to build. So, so for us, it was a way to um, kind of mitigate the unknown risk that might be associated with the bidding environment. We believe that um, that is checked uh, from the standpoint when the board said we will only issue what we need and that planning will actually happen, the specific planning will happen before we issue the bonds so that we do have a more precise method of determining how many, how many bonds to issue, which may be less. Uh, even not even including that 500,000, it may be less. Because as you said, we may go and look at a regional HVAC, the primary estimates based on the current system and what that might cost to build in three, four, five years. Um, so the idea is that if we look at the regional system, uh, that might come in even lower. So, uh, so that's how I would explain uh, why those numbers are high and also um, that extra difference between adding up the two projects and equal to the 20 million. Um, yes, sir. If, if, if this is kind of a if in fact you are figuring out to maybe do this, some of this work in 2020 or 2022, mm -hmm. and why is there such a delay in actually doing it when you think there's a need right now on the same track? Uh, no, there is a need right now. So, so, so the, what are you going to do if, if in fact yeah. between now and 2022 when you did. So, so uh, correct, absolutely. So we, we are actually doing it right now. The board has already approved, um, I want to say about $180,000 to purchase their own um, generator system uh, to get off the woodland grid. And, uh, oh, I forget what it's called, that actually regulates the electricity and keeps it the same. Um, part of the problem that we run into with the current system is spikes in, in the electrical grid that's, that's when it goes out. So, so we are actually going to provide our own regulation and our own energy for that system this year so we don't have to try and get parts. Now, that being said, um, that, that's our plan for, for if it, we were going to go in 2020 and move on. Um, so we, we need to quickly, get the if it passes, get the bond oversight committee on board and get these plans drawn, which they shouldn't be super complicated since it's a second gym, even if we add a, a bathroom on, and get those to DSA as fast as we can. Uh, because that process right now is about six months. In the meantime, uh, we might be able to start and overlap some of that bidding process. But when we were doing these estimates that, uh, that Doug's talking about, we, we were being ultra conservative and doing everything linear. So we would do this, complete that. We would you know, do this, complete that, and then we would start the construction. So it took into account about a year of planning and, and architecting, and then two years of building. Um, a gym, we're probably going to need six months for maybe the planning and architectural, and maybe 18 months or a little less for the construction. But we, we were just being really conservative. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, I'll get back to this next. That kind of explains with the gym. I shouldn't really say much about the gym, but um, there is a line item on the uh, estimate for the gym that is. Uh, cost to midpoint of the project, which is, I assume, would be that's when they think when when the estimator figured that they would have bought all the materials required. So there would be no escalation cost. Am I correct? Okay. Um, and but, if, if we go with the least least bet, like um, Wayne, Wayne, uh, or uh, Warren, uh, then the, the, the cost would be locked for the guaranteed maximum price at the beginning, not necessarily. Okay. Well, this applies to both. This question applies to both projects. The proponents are saying they turned it into the uh, elections office that there are no chain orders allowed. Is that correct? I, I would say that's that's the discussion that I believe led to that statement was um, what does a lease lease back construction method do? And and the answer was it, it limits the change orders. To, you have change orders, but they're within the guaranteed maximum price. Um, but it doesn't eliminate the change orders. They're just built into that guaranteed maximum price. And that is assuming you use that construction method. Correct. If you go a bid build, yes, there you go. But none of the resolution and nothing in the book to the voters says that you'll define what the contract title is. Correct. 
Because we don't have a lump sum contract. It's the risk is all on the contract. You say, I'm going to give you $5 million to do this. Right. I don't care what you find. I don't care what crawls out of the ground. Yeah. You get $5 million and nothing else. Right. If they need to change the order or you decide to change something and change the cost, they're going to ask for a change order. And if you don't give it to them, they're going to take it in court. Yes. And the same with the bid bill. Um, yes, you will have change order. Absolutely. Yeah. So actually, that is, to be nice, is deceptive to the voter to say that there are no change orders allowed. Because there is no precedence for that in any public contract. I know you didn't have anything to do with that. You didn't have anything to do with that. But everybody needs to be aware of that fact. Right. Um, the other thing about the gym that bothers me tremendously is when did it become a safety issue? In February, when the principal wrote the justification letter, or do you have letters from principals, teachers, coaches, students, parents saying, my kids are at risk in this, in this big gym without a second gym. We need this now. Can you substantiate that? Or is the only time it ever became a safety issue is in February when the current principal of the school wrote a justification letter that she was asked to do? So I, I probably can't provide you with anything. Um, I, I would say that when our board have talked to community members and staff members, uh, when I've talked to staff members, uh, when they will identify for me um, verbally, uh, when it became a safety issue was about two years after the school was fully um, enrolled. So my understanding was there were freshmen and sophomore the first year, and then freshmen and sophomore juniors, and freshmen and sophomore juniors and seniors. And then about two years after that is when, when um, the enrollment was starting to impact that one gym. So uh, ballpark is that about 2004, 2005, somewhere in there. That, that's the way. It, maybe, but but that's the way it was described to me. Um, and so, and the letter, I, I I am responsible for that letter. In essence, when uh, our board came and they identified, um, hey, here's the two projects we want. I think at, at uh, a meeting where we were talking about whether or not to go 2018 or 2020, um, I called the principal and said, hey, can you talk to your staff? And have them put together um, just an outline of uh, why, uh, what the safety issues are. So, so I believe that yes, it came from the principal, uh, Ms. Reese, but she had developed that using her staff. And I, I just wanted more backup for our board um, to consider. But isn't the isn't the safety issue really a scheduling issue as opposed to true no? Uh, it's a number of students issue. The issue is that. We make, they make it, it's, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Karen Bain, I'm a board member. Um, I don't know if I can say that or if I have to say I'm, I hear my own person. Okay. Um, it's, the students are not unsafe because when it rains or when there's any kind of bad weather, all they do is sit in the gym because it, there isn't enough space for them to engage in any kind of PE activities when all of them are in the gym. Um, it has to do with a numbers issue. There are a number of complicated things that are going on. One is that um, Pioneer is about 250 students bigger right now, I think, than Moon High. Um, and that's where all the growth right now is happening is on that side of town. So it's, it's only going to probably get bigger um, if, uh, you know, there's possibilities that, um, you know, we could move the line. That would be a possibility, but nobody likes to even talk about that. Um, but the result is that it's, it's still growing on that side of town. Um, so the kids just sit right now. If there were two gyms, then they would be able to engage in physical activity. Hold, 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 hold on. You know, <laughs> the safety issue is maybe a little hard. What if the high school had one gym, one high school, so it was much larger for how many years? Well, the second gym was built around 2006 or seven. Yeah. 35 years. 35 years. <laughs> one gym, so the safety issue, unless things have changed drastically since 2001 to 2018. We never heard anything about safety until oh, so six months ago. Sure. So remember, Woodland High School, Woodland High School, one gym, and only one high school. 
But now we have two high schools. Now we're just high school. Let me enroll in. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing, I think it is ill-advised to describe things as a safety issue unless you wish to invite liability lawsuits. Um, in general now, um, they put a sign out that says, it doesn't say uh, slippery floor, watch out. It just says wet floor, use, you know, <laughs> caution, you know. So anyway, I, I think that's ill-advised in that particular case. And when you say that you're going to give these people a year to build this gym, I know of no finer way to see that they have their workmen's comp, their wages, and everything else paid by you during that whole year. And I cannot imagine that a company that you say you're choosing because it's bigger and better equipped than local companies cannot get in and get that gym done in probably 90 days to 120 days max. Otherwise, you're, you're just paying the bills for that company. That's how I see it. You know, I, I'm so confused as to what you're doing. I have a board member here, and all they know how to do is talk about students. You're talking about money, yet nobody has decide, decided what the building is, what the problem is. None of them have said that. And how in the world am I going to tell you, yeah, you can have $20 million when you don't know what you're going to do with it? Okay? Now, until you tell me exactly what you're going to do, you're not going to get my money. It's just that simple. You haven't told, them, told me a thing yet. Tom, if I may, the, the estimator who estimated the... Uh, Where's the building work? He, they don't. They haven't picked the location. Of yet. course, I'm well, sorry. I know. I know, but that's that's the problem with planning after you get. Listen, started. I know all about planning. Okay, yeah. so okay. don't tell me that you know that I don't know what I'm talking about. I know I'm saying you have to have a building to be able to tell you how much it costs. Right, but what they estimated, what they told the board that they were estimating, was a bare bones building. It's not going to have anything in it. It's four walls of floor. And that's that's. No. 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 Bare bones. I mean, I know what people are saying they want, but that's not that's not it. And the the um, self cost contingencies are also about fifty percent of the cost of the project, which is ridiculously high. And so here you're getting the twenty million dollars, and and you have told us. I know you have both told us right. that if. The, if you don't need it, need the money, if it comes in lower, you're not going to get to the bond. But there's a guy named Dale Scott who has copyrighted, I think, as opposed to copyrighted, a um, method of after the fact coming back for another election and saying the money that you that you got approved in the last bond that you didn't spend, you can get reapproved for a new projects here. Well, he said that already. So okay. you're not giving us news. So he has already said he's going to use the money, whatever is left over. So don't no, tell me. No, no, he didn't. I, I, I can't believe that he said that. No, no, no. I mean, I, no, I, I don't believe I said that. I, no. You know, if you said that, it was before I got here. Right. I'd be all over you if you said that. Because that's against the law. I, I would be. So. Uh, uh, let, let me not hear that. Oh, wait, hang on. I, he was there. No, I'm, sorry. Yeah. I'm curious though, well I don't happen to live in the Woodland or the school district or the school area, but how many uh, bond measures that have been approved by the voters, when, where, what number, and if there were any parcel taxes approved by the voters, are in fact in the school district being assessed to the taxpayers currently as of what right now? My understanding is the 1999 bond is still in effect. Uh, I, I'm going to use your number, about $30 million left on that. Uh, I'm not aware of any personal taxes. Well, how much was that bond for originally? $16 million. $16 million? Yeah, maybe not that much. No, uh, Louis, do you remember, the, or Karen, do you remember the, the 99 bond? Maybe I don't know if it was $60 million. 60 million. 60 million. I, honestly, I don't remember. And, and the bond that's currently being proposed on the ballot now, is this a general obligation bond or a revenue bond? 
a general obligation. It's a general obligation. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just a couple, a couple thoughts. Um, bluntly, I am not impressed. Although I'm more impressed with you than I have been with the superintendents in the past, so that's good. And I think. <laughs> about holding the board and yourself accountable for, for coming up with this and having the hard facts. Just like you know, any business, to her point, any business, you're asking for $20 million from your board, you better have your shit together and every T crossed, every I got it. And for you guys to be just disorganized and seemingly like, you know, going to wait to rush things and not have all that, Especially knowing we said this from two years ago, and even before that, saying, keep your stuff together. We'll help you. We'll come as a community members and help you figure out what the most pressing issues are, help you figure out how to get stuff passed. Now, I've been kind of removed for a couple of years, but like I feel like not much has changed. Like I still have this impression where I have children that are entering, one's in school now, two more soon to be. I want to approve bonds. I want to improve our schools. I want to get behind you guys. But like nothing is making me feel warm and fuzzy about this. And actually, it's making me frustrated and want to fight it. And so that's where I'm at. So, yeah. I'm going to say one thing, which is probably going to be controversial. I'm just going to stuff I was at the meetings, the school board meetings, when this was decided. When you first came to propose the um, your your spreadsheet with the little star call outs, this this is this shows that we can do good work. This shows this. Oh, so is that. Oh, okay. Okay. If you have it on your website now. Sure, change the wording of the last paragraph. Um, yeah, I changed that dollar amount. Yeah. yeah, and it started out I believe it was fifty million dollars, and it came down to twenty million. You said it was a uh, kicking off point to get the discussion rolling. This was in January of this year, not a year and a half, not two years ago, this year. So um, here you you came forward with the board. The board in their discussion and Morgan Childers, you know, I'm going to mention it by name because he said this and it's on tape. You can go back and listen to it. He said we need to give the public an offer they can review because they were looking for something. Small amount of progress that would be a smaller bond, which is what we had been suggesting as the better way. Um, that they could build, they could do it quickly, do it with a shorter turnaround time, save, save the public money, and win that trust. However, that trust doesn't really happen when you say, we need to give you an offer you can't refuse. And then follow that up with saying that. In, four year, in, in, uh, uh, in 2020, four of the members of the board may not be here, and we won't have anything to show for what we've done. Now, that likens to either a legacy or for um, re-election campaigns to say, look what we did. We got you at the second gym. We got you at HPAC. It's one of the two or a combination of both, but basically one is being sold to the public is not a need, not a safety issue, but an offer you, we can't refuse because there was, they, those two items were picked, not by you, not by you, not by administration. They were picked by the board. You guys went with it. You abrogated that responsibility to the board to decide what projects there were. And if you didn't, then I would like to see the side-by-side um, the -side comparison you did of all the pro potential projects and said these are the Health and safety, these are the biggest health and safety issues that we have on campus, and I don't believe that was done. I can't believe that. Where is it? Where did it go before the board? With the we public? talked about <clears throat> we uh, when, let's see, when the HVAC system came up with uh, Beamer, we talked about that. I asked specifically 
to have a report on what is the state of the rest of the HVAC systems, make sure that, that nothing else was going downhill. I sort of knew about Woodland Highs, um, so we got, a, we got a, a report on the status of all the HVAC systems. Um, I also asked for a report about all the play fields and all of the pavements, events, and those were uh, but those are, those are the Usher? status reports right. that totally contradict the SARS. The school accountability reform cards don't claim any of those things in there. So there's nothing in there about those. There's, in fact, the HVA system, HVA system for Woodland High has been rated as good, top marks, for years. Now, what's up with that? So if you're ranking it's older things. Than I am. Okay, <laughs> but if you remember that presentation that Dick Carroll did on the HVA system, the Beaver Elementary one was the one that was going to go ahead for about $3 million. The, um, they didn't have one. So, uh, right, they didn't have one. Okay, so, so right. Right. But if I can interject, um, so you're correct that there are no side-by-side events. -side um, so staff, yeah, staff um, generated information requested by the board. Right. Um, and they did pick those two projects. And they, they did that um, not only by listening to our status report, to project reports, but also talking to community members and staff members. So um, I don't know what word you use that I did, abrogated or something like that. Abrogated. Uh, that's Authority. probably uh, But ultimately, the board would have picked those projects, uh, not those specific ones, but ultimately, um, that was a, a decision that the board had to make. So, so but yes, I cannot provide you a, a list of side-by-side -side projects that. But the thing is, is there's a lot being bandied about about the, uh, the age of the HVAC system at Woodland High School. What Nick said in his presentation was it was an average age of 38 and a half years. That means some are newer, some are older. The, the place was built in 1969, and I guess someone here said that it was installed in 1970. It was installed in 1970. So some components could be from 1970. Well, and but, something like the second gym could be from 2006 or from somewhere, some, something like that. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, but what I'm saying is, you're banning about, I mean, what the uh, uh, what the proponent's argument says, it's 47, uh, 47 years old. I got an email from the head of the, uh, of the pro committee, the, the one, the, the woman that you selected, or that you, the convinced to do that. Um, head of the P P I think she's head of the Pioneer PTA. Yeah. She sent me an email asking me to join up. Um, and she said that she got word from you or you, somebody in administration, that it was 47 or 48 years old. Somebody else said 50 years old. But actually Nick, who was doing the presentation that's supposed to be the most informational, the guy who's right there, said it was an average of 38 and a half years. I know there was an air handler component that was replaced during Marie Armstrong. So are you going to throw off the baby with the bathwater? Are you going to rip out everything, no matter what age it is, no matter what functionality it is, and say, we got $20 million to spend. Let's put everything new. And then it can all fail at the same time. But you, you did say something good that you were going to have areas. So that that can happen. Yeah, so I did say that's, that's a possibility. Um, the other thing is, so uh, the standalone, so for example, uh, air conditioning units on portables, um, air conditioning that are their own um, independent unit like on the second gym, um, no, we would not replace all of that. Um, we, we were talking about with our estimate and everything, just the central, the, it was based on replacing the original central chiller system. Um, and so I, I think I've emptied about 70 to 80 percent of the classrooms, which is what that system covers. The rest are either newer or they're standalone. So we'll see that, yeah. that also, um, flies in the face of what the voter is going to see on the, the wording specifically, which the elections office confirmed, what they were going to use, what we told them to use, is a complete system-wide gutting, essentially. It's not the wording you chose, but basically it's everything. So what now you're saying is it's 80%. Well, and, and what I, yeah, I, I guess it would be something that you don't foresee, but in essence, like if you're a barred unit on a portable, that's not in any system, that's its own, own individual system, or the each unit on the second gym is its own system. So, right, but, but what it leads back to, and 
bring this back around. But Jeff, what my point is, the planning should have been done. You, you have told the public, you have it on your website now, that you, for a year and a half to two years, you've been planning this. Okay, the money, as Kelly said, should be, the money should have been an issue. If you were a business, and I know that all the way back to Deborah LaVoy, schools are not a business, but if you were, this would never fly. Um, but to be deceptive about this, which I think a lot of this is deceptive, it's a little, some weaselly words and things like that, are these the kinds of things that you would allow students to get away with in classrooms? <laughs> I mean, it's a fair question. Would you? And I know what, I already don't have an answer, but I already know what the answer is. But to get, you know, the end does not justify the means in everything. So the, the end, if you want, is $2.2 million. But are you willing to sacrifice the trust of the community by telling them things that you think they want to hear with projects you think they want more than any others? And then they find out, oh, no, we could have done it for X amount of dollars. We, we didn't know that was going to happen. Or worst case scenario, we find out that money was spent on things that shouldn't have been spent on. And that's where the other What's that? That's why there's a bond oversight committee. Bond oversight committee. I have a question of my tail to make sure that this thing is good. I have worked my tail. I am not a professional politician. We did the best we could with 300 words. And that was what we had. I don't know all the nuances about air conditioning, and none of us are professionals. But I will tell you one thing: the HVAC system is absolutely the most important thing that needs to get done in this school system. Absolutely, hands down, without a doubt. Because if it goes out, I really do not know what we will do. The kids will not have heat in their classrooms. That whole, basically, the whole thing, except Aaron, for yes. You are a guest at this meeting. Right. So yes. don't, don't raise your voice to anybody. Yes, sir. You hear me? You are a guest. Yes, sir. I'm not here, sit here and listen to you. Well, I work my tail off. You all can either go for it or not, and that's your choice. You're splitting a lot of hairs. We've done the best we can. And that's all I can say. I've done my darndest and the rest of the board has to. We're trying to answer your questions. I think you've got some legitimate questions. We went the way that you wanted. With going with a smaller bond, it made some sense, especially since s and failed really miserably and it was a really big bond. So we went with a smaller bond. You guys thought it, it would work well, so I was like, okay, good. Um, let's do that. We went with two very clear projects. s and was very complicated. A lot of people had a lot of issues with that. I, I, I was very confused and I was on the board. Um, it was very, very confusing. So we went with something that was just two. Um, and we know that trust is not where we'd like it to be. We wanted to get as much as we could. And that, that's better. That um, we wanted to do something, and then we know there are tons of needs out there. I mean, there are tons. We could easily do a $100 million loan for this district, and probably not, still not cover all the needs. Um, but we went with with what are the greatest needs right now. The board felt these were the greatest needs. So, that is what the board said. That is what the board said. Yes, I have a question over here. Yes, but I'll say. Can I get her first? Certainly. Yeah. So, I, I, to take a step back, I think, you know, I was unfair. I, I really should have stressed more. You have made progress, right? So, I do see a lot, a lot of positive, Movements. The deferred maintenance is huge. Preventative maintenance is huge. It was a huge thing a couple years ago. The smaller bond, the shorter time period, very big things that we are very concerned with. And I do see you guys have stepped in the right direction. The oversight committee clearly is kind of just to me wrong that you guys would be the ones selecting and mandating you know, any policies that, that this oversight committee who's supposed to be overseeing you is, I mean, that seems completely backwards. So I guess my question to you all is, 
what could you do to now, from this point until you know the time comes where we have to vote, to fine tune it, to get it to where it makes everybody in this room very comfortable with it, and get us to say yes, and we will help you. But like you, you can't. Uh, to me, I'm not happy as it is. Right. So is there time to to make it better? And more tighter and more firm by the time you vote. Straightforward. Yeah, so, so all we have blood is you work, no. Um, uh, but, uh, but I think that uh, the issue I, I hear you expressing is that, um, and, and we've talked to Doug, we've talked to Mark, we've talked to a, a variety of people, and it's, it's, I will describe it as the squishiness that comes with an estimate. And, uh, and part, part of the rationale behind that is, and, and it goes to Doug's comment of 20.2 isn't really 20, uh, but that's the, the cost of, of that we're going to incur to issue these bonds, is that, you know, uh, because of a variety of other activities going on, the stadium, uh, we're still building phase two of uh, Spring Lake. So, so we do have these other uh, large capital projects there is not, uh, we're, we're cash poor. So if you're a business, I talk to my brother in all the time, and he will say, well, you know, we, we spend about 40% on our staff, and then we have research and development, we have capital projects, we have to replace our equipment. So that is part of their budget. So as an educational organization, whether you agree or not, we're about 80% staff and, and salary and benefits. So that leaves a very small amount. And when you have some of these other projects, it makes it difficult to have the cash to start those projects and actually hire an architect, get those plans approved to a point where it's so specific. So the really only method that we have uh, the, on one extreme, which is exactly what you're talking about, we just sell the 20 million and we hold it and say, yeah, now we'll go see what we can do. So the, the way that we're trying to combat that is to say, you know what? Let's get our bond oversight committee, and yes, I understand, the board picks up, the board does the bylaws. Let's get them in place so, so they can then have a voice at that point as we start to plan. And in essence, what we'll probably do, <coughs> don't hold me to this, we'll probably issue a, a part of that point to get us going. And then once we have those exact plans, and we know a, a tougher or more specific amount, then we can issue that second amount to um, and that's that's how, and which then in essence doesn't um, uh, go beyond what we need. And, and so and that's really the only way we can address your specific concern. Between now and November, we would not be able to do that. Uh, did you have a question? Uh, uh, I'll come uh, here. Oh, then, oh no, no, you weren't asked yet. Do as a then I'll get you right after her, okay? okay. Yes. Do as a do her first, then I'll. Okay, she, she is our. Oh, it's just a comment in that when <coughs> S&T had come out and I had read about it, what really threw me was the $97 million to be paid off in 30, so 35, 35, years. I think it was 35. 35 years. And what really stunned me was the idea that if that had passed, the kindergarten children of today Slavery. would still be paid when they put their own children in the school. I mean, that itself was a no vote. I mean, I didn't have to read another right. thing. And so in comparison to that, this is better. But like everybody else, there's a lot of questions, not as many as back then. So let's say that, yeah, you guys have improved if you're getting there. Uh, you know, uh, going, you had mentioned, I think one of your questions early on was, what was the rate? And we said it's $52 for 100000 and, yeah. and how long it was paid off? Five years. We did explore the idea. We were trying to figure out, uh, is 52 for 100000 is that too high? Would, would, and of course, this becomes a, a, you know, a campaign strategy. Would it be easier if we did $25 for 100000 but you pay that off for 10 years? Uh, in our discussions, that, that added to the interest. So, 
yes, you could pay it off over 10 years, but then you were paying a much larger chunk of interest. And so in the end, the board decided five years would be. So here's an interesting question. The average uh, value of the average piece of, let's say, residential property in Woodland, how much would that tax be on the average piece of property? So, so when I, would, I hopped on Zillow, I think it was, to find out what the average selling price of a house. And I, I want to say it was right around that. Yeah, $400,000. So wouldn't that be more than $52, dollars I think, the yeah. house would be Yeah, I think, I think it would probably be and I don't know around 300,000. So yeah. I, was, I was just estimating about 150 Six. per yeah, yeah per year for for five years. And uh, that is cheap. completely ballpark on my part. This thing you're not the best Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's not cheap. Um, I'm really glad that we had some uh, members and potential members of the school board here. Um, we I just handed Tom an envelope of stuff covering school bonds over the past probably 40 years. And um, some of them we worked against and defeated, and um, some of them passed. We're still paying you know, on one, a 30-year bond, I mean, like Isabel said. So I think we have made our concerns known. Um, and I, I'm, so I'm glad that the school board can hear, because um, I know that they have to work hard to, to come up with things, but I think what we want to see is more input on those people who are interested, and, and we're really keen to see that this oversight committee has some teeth in it, and that we do everything in a business-like way. So I think Whereas you say you don't have time between now and November, actually, you can go ahead and start talking about your oversight committee. And you might even formulate a part of it now and a part of it after the election. Because after the election, some people might be become <laughs> <laughs> interested, shall we say. So um, I do think that there are things that you can do between now and November. Um, certainly. You can do things to encourage us sure. to support you, which we would very much like to do because we see that you are moving in a direction that we like. So um, I think with that, we are going to need to chew on all this. We have other things on the agenda that we do need to get to. And I think as you consider some of the things that we've said, we consider some of the things that you've said, and we'll have, I'm sure, further communication. Um, and, and I appreciate that. I, I, I was actually being very specific in my response to her mm -hmm. to um, the planning and getting some precise plans. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are some other things that our board can certainly consider. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I mean, I just appreciate the opportunity to be here and just I mean, tell, tell you what I think anyway. Um, I know I have a perspective that is, is a certainly um, jaded towards being in favor of these projects and how we're doing. Well, that's what they're paying for, I yeah, think. Yeah, but, but I will also tell you, and I don't know if, if they're an official group or not, or subcommittee or whatever, but, you know, we, we have provided opportunities to meet with Mark. Um, Tim and John, we've met with a couple times. Uh, Doug has popped in on, I'd say, more than half. Um, and, and so we enjoy that back and forth conversation. Um, and, and I don't believe we've agreed on everything, but, but I also think that, um, the on the better way site there's an actual I don't know kind of supporting guy that basically says hey if you don't get 25 percent of these points we're, we're coming after you and it says but if you get 80 percent of them uh, we'll support it yeah. you know I don't know where we were back four years ago on that scorecard but but when I done it from my perspective of course I, again you know I have my own perspective I think we're somewhere in the middle um, and so I think we have made some gains. Uh, are we at 80%? Ah, you know, probably not. But uh, are we below 50? I don't think so. Uh, so so I, I think there are some good aspects about it. Uh, really, my goal coming here tonight was just to tell you where I think we made some gains. You know, people pointed out where there's some weak areas of, of, of what we're doing. And, you know, they're, they're probably true. Maybe um, a better way initiative could be looked at by the whole school board sometimes so that they would kind of know what 
It's just a matter of giving it away. Yeah. And they can do it. Yeah. So, so thank you very much for having us, John. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, I just want to say one thing. Um, what you, uh, some of the things that you have done in the LP to save the taxpayer's money, mm -hmm. which is going with the, the smaller bond with the greater pay, with the shorter pay down, that actually um, is laudable. Um, it is also um, uh, deserving of some, some measure of trust from the public. So that is correct. That is very good. Um, my concern is a overpay for the work that's being done you negate any exactly of that, right, which you already No, that, that is that is correct. And I, and I think that I think I even shared this with Mark. Um, our board has made the commitment to only sell the bonds that we need in public at a board meeting. But like, as you point out, there's no law or anything that holds them to that. Mm -hmm. uh, my response is that if they don't, they're not they're not a board member, you know, for much longer. Um, that, that, I think that, uh, as a superintendent, I take their commitment very seriously to do whatever I can to make them keep their commitment. Um, but again, like you said, they, they could go a different direction. I hope they go. And just to say one more thing on that, if you um, if you do what um, was being asked here with the oversight committee, then if they do choose to overspend or choose to spend money that um, they don't necessarily need, the right then build an oversight committee that will be able to see that mm -hmm. and stop it. Preferably before it happens. Because they would be in on the planet today. Which is unprecedented. And you you should be um, really lauded for that. That there there I I call other oversight committees that you know they're mostly worthless. But uh, they're cheerleaders for the for the district they they cover. And that's really what it is. I've gone to the um, to the uh, university level, same thing. Um, and when when you get into um, specifics, they're like, you know, that sort of thing. So actually, you should you you actually have done some things very well. And although my comments don't necessarily well. Uh, the, the way I would describe it is, if we've lifted our leg, we've stretched out, we're getting ready to take that first step in the right direction. Right. And so, if the bond passes, then I would say we take the first step and we lift that left leg. And uh, we all need to be there but we're going to push you in the right direction. Hopefully not this way, and I hope we forward. So, yeah, absolutely. So, so again, uh, thank you very much for um, asking your questions. And, and, uh, I have contacts, so if you talk to Mark, Doug, Tim, uh, John, they can get us questions through email or next time we meet. We, we meet, um, well, at least we have something set up a little, uh, I want to say the week before each board meeting, because um, they, they get to see the agendas, and if there's something on there, we can certainly we can talk about it. So. Thank you. With that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.